felt like we were abandoning these kids. Financial literacy is not taught in high schools. Over time, you're going to end up paying back that much. So you write that down for the first line. MoneyThink recruits and trains the best college students it can find and places them in local high school classrooms to serve as peer mentors for urban teenagers. We taught them the financial literacy curriculum, we taught them the entrepreneurship curriculum, and then we were able to see them put it in action and see how they applied it. It gives a break from the boring teachers, the boring lectures, to actually interacting with someone else and having a, a, a conversation, having dialogue. That's what I love the best about Money Think. Hi there. My name is Ted Gonder, and I'm the uh, co-founder and CEO of Money Think. When I was growing up, I was a bit of a knucklehead. I got into trouble, I'd get kicked out of class, uh, and I was sort of lost and confused until when I was 14, I got a D minus on a math test, uh, and my mom went to the local community college and put flyers up saying, desperate mother seeking tutor for failing son. Uh, and <laughs> the first guy to apply was a Ghanaian young man who was 19. He had saved money for a plane ticket to come to the United States and pursue the American dream. And every day for the next year, we sat down and he changed my life. He built my academic confidence, but more importantly, he taught me to treat my life like an entrepreneurial venture and my decisions as if they were investments in my future. Uh, and four years later, I had built a business, I had saved a lot of money, and I had gotten a full ride scholarship to the University of Chicago. And so when I got into the University of Chicago, something happened. The economy collapsed. Uh, and my friends and I, nerdy economic students, thought, what's the simplest thing we could do as college students to pay it forward, to do something, to make an impact uh, locally in our community. And we thought, and part of this was what I thought, we thought back to our upbringings, what if we created a tutoring program, but instead of focusing on academics, we would focus on money. So we did, we skipped class, we called schools, uh, and we got into the classroom and just opened up really natural conversations with students. We found what we shared in common interesting conversations around Kim Kardashian's credit habits or Justin Bieber's prepaid card fees, Wesley Snipes' tax evasion. And as this program uh, grew in Chicago and elsewhere, we realized that the problem we were tackling, financial illiteracy and incapability in low-income youth, uh, was much bigger than we had anticipated. We learned that the fastest growing, bank, fastest growing group of bankruptcy filers is 18 to 25 years of age. We learned that for the first time in history, student loan debt exceeds credit card debt at over a trillion dollars. And we learned that nothing effective is being done about this. That every single year, over two million young people enter adulthood with absolutely no training or preparation to equip them for the most important financial decisions of their entire lives. So we built an award-winning program. We won awards from the President of the United States. We scaled to 10 states. Uh, and then we had this embarrassing revelation that guess where all of our instruction was happening? In the classroom during the school day. Guess where none of our students' financial decisions were happening? in the classroom during the school day. Uh, so we also at that time discovered that almost all of our students across income levels had smartphones. So we put our program in their pocket and decided to see what we could do. And we partnered with IDEO.org. We deepened impact. We deepened the relationships between our mentors and our mentees. And we brought financial education to life. Uh, and we piloted in the spring and built an interactive social platform that helps students build healthy financial habits. Uh, but what our students told us was that this is like a gamified Instagram for finances. And they were excited to earn points along the way. So what we're seeing is not just knowledge gain in our financial education and mentorship programs, but actual behavior change. And we're the only financial education program of this type. Uh, as you'll see on the left, a student uh, uh, in, in the app completed a challenge uh, by saving money uh, through having her mom do her hair for her. Saved over $100. On the, the student on the right, is actually changing the lens through which she views her experiences in the world. She went to Navy Pier, but she acknowledged that she was saving on leisure and entertainment costs in doing so. And that's showing a mindset shift. Here, the student on the left, uh, and we saw a lot of shoe stores, we saw a lot of vending machines, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of pictures of hot Cheetos. 
Uh, and the, this student is actively deciding not to go into the shoe store, and instead, she's taking a picture of that impulse save, posting it to her classroom newsfeed, and getting four likes from her peers who are encouraging her uh, to make smart decisions financially. Instant gratification uh, is what our students are getting for making decisions that are based on delayed gratification. And on the right, here's an opportunity for a mentor to intervene. You know, we're seeing saving money for college, that's great, but those Benjamins should be in the bank. Now, <laughs> this matters. You know, hot Cheetos are great, shoe stores are fine, entertainment costs are fine, but teenagers, what, we're not, you know, filing for retirement, none of, none of, this matters because even though so much money is going into charter schools and new public schools and education investment, the number one reason that low-income students who get into college don't make it all the way through is still financial. And it's not that they, they don't have the hustle to get the scholarships in the first place, is that once they're in, there are all sorts of pressures psychological, family, community, on campus, that lead them to make poor decisions with the money that they do have. And so we've built a team. We went from a college movement of scrappy, nerdy kids uh, to a team now of six. Myself, I serve on the White House Council, advising President Obama on financial education. Jennifer, who's in the audience, built and scaled an ed tech nonprofit to hundreds of people. Uh, and Joe taught in the South Bronx, actually. Um, before uh, managing a $65 operation at Target. Uh, and so there are other cool people involved from the private and public sectors. Uh, and what really gets us up in the morning are stories like Jeremiah's, where this is a, a guy who's now a buddy of mine but was a mentee a few years ago. You know, 51st in Cottage Grove on the south side of Chicago. When he was 12, his father was murdered. When he was 14, his mother's house was foreclosed. He didn't know whether he would go to college, but he had good grades, and he was involved in the football team. And he came into the Money Think program and shared his ambitions, he shared his goals, and he just wanted guidance, and he wanted clarity. And now, a couple years later, Jeremiah's on a full ride at Dartmouth, and he's actually starting a Money Think chapter there because the program had such an immense impact on his life and his worldview. So tonight, if everybody in the audience gives $250, 250 funds one student for an entire school year, that's 21 weeks of hands-on small group mentorship and use of the app. If everyone in the audience gives $250, we'll fund the entire state of California for two years. Uh, and if you're interested in donating more, $5,000 funds a, an entire class for a year, and $10,000 uh, puts your name on a school. You can visit it uh, and, uh, and feel really good about yourself. So join us, light up the future, invest in it with us, uh, and uh, thank you for listening. Happy to chat.